This video is sponsored by Shopify. All right, so here we have my inflatable tent, and behind me, I have a beautiful trout lake. Without further ado, I'm gonna get this thing inflated. All right, I've got the tiny little pump. It's kind of funny, it's in the shape of a grenade. This is what it came with. I'm gonna be using this thing to pump it up. So we've only got one fill port here. I'm gonna try my absolute hardest not to uh, make any holes in this thing prematurely. Well, that's not gonna work. Well, the grenade has grenaded. It won't, uh, it won't run off of my truck. Oh, that's why. Because it takes 600 watts. Probably could have done the quick maths on that and realized my batteries weren't going to work. So what do you do in that situation? Uh-oh. Hand pump's not gonna work. All right, well, even though I brought all of these extra pumps and things to try and avoid this exact scenario, the connectors don't fit with the hose <laughs> that we use to uh, pump this thing up. So I'm hoping this little tiny battery powered pump is gonna be enough. So this tent cost me $600 on Alibaba. Today we're gonna to be testing it to see if it uh, can actually camp. Well, that's about as inflated as it's gonna get with this little tiny battery powered pump. I have to figure out something to be able to make the, uh, the hand pump work, I think. I think this is about as inflated as I'm gonna get this thing. It's not 100% full, but if I keep monkeying around with the, uh, the hand pump, I think it's just gonna end up getting more deflated. Now I'm working on my mattress. We're all inflated. Now what's off to do, get the boat out. Okay. Okay, we've got the Tent all loaded up on the lakeside. We're gonna get the kayak going now. I only got a short little paddle just out yonder, but. So I've got two anchors inside of the kayak. I've got a little lead line that I'm gonna try to drag this thing with. It's gonna be a bit of a sail, so just crossing my fingers that will make it, but we're not gonna know until we try. This thing is a sail. 
Well, the good news is, is the tent's floating. All right, I don't know how deep it is here, so I'm gonna drop a fishing line down just to see if I can get to the bottom. Oh wow, it's pretty deep. <laughs> it's cruising. All right, I'm trying to do this anchor without flipping the kayak. We got our 25 pound anchor down there. I gotta get this safely attached to the tent. It's funny, when I put this rope away, it was nice and organized. Can't really say the same for right now. All right, we are detaching it from the boat now. All right. It's not poke a giant hole. Let me drop the second anchor. Now, what in the heck do we got going on here? Oh, boy. How did this happen? And now, I feel like it might be pretty sketchy to get in and out of this thing, so we're only going to do it once tonight. And we're going to start fishing. Hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. Luke, that camo bag's not still in there, is it? I'm my buddy staying with me on shore just in case something goes wrong. We've got um, some walkie-talkies. So if we start sinking, we're using it. All right, so today we got a little tiny spinner on some conventional gear. It's pretty windy outside, so we're not going to be... We're not gonna be fly fishing today, but this lake's full of rainbow trout. We're gonna see if we can't catch one so we can have it for dinner. All right, nothing on the first pass with the spinner, so I'm switching over to this little trolling crank. See it dancing? See if that'll catch one. All right, so I just went all the way down to the other side of the lake. It's real shallow and goose poopy. We're gonna go back over toward the tent. <laughs> Look at my little tent just floating there. Oh, fish don't want to bite right now. I'm gonna keep trying, because they keep jumping. Look, there was one that just jumped right there. Getting a beautiful little sunset. My legs are absolutely soaked, because Pulling that wet rope over them got me good. I think we're gonna head on over to the tent. My floating tent. We meet again. I'll put the fishing rod away so I don't pop any unwanted holes. I don't know if there's really gonna be any good way to do this. We're going from one floating thing to the other. We gotta do it sometime, so might as well be now, I guess. All right, ready? Oh. Could have gone worse, I guess. We're floating. Feels like I'm on a waterbed. The floor is just like a tiny, thin piece of membrane. So when you're standing on it, it really feels a little rickety. <laughs> Sitting down's a little better. Now a word from the sponsor of this video, Shopify. It seems like everybody these days is trying to start a business or at least thinking about it. And sometimes people get cold feet, but with the help of today's sponsor, Shopify, you can make those cold feet warm. Even before starting my own business, Shopify has always been a big part of my life. Many people ask me what my job was before YouTube, and the answer is I was helping manage a Shopify business. When I was starting up my own business, I was looking for an easy to use all-in-one commerce platform, and Shopify ticked those boxes. In short, they just make it really easy to start, manage, and grow your own business no matter what it is. With the use of their platform, you're able to sell online, in person, and across all social media platforms. 
Shopify supports businesses across the whole journey from first sale to full scale. Whether I'm truck camping in a floating tent or on a frozen lake, I'm able to go in and see and manage my business. Ah, oh, hey look, there's 14 people on the website right now. If I wanted to completely change the layout of my website, I could even do so right now. Shopify also offers a lot of great resources if you're just starting out, um, and they offer a lot of great plans. So whether you're a beginner or advanced, Shopify is something for you. So sometimes the scariest part about starting a business is picking out the name. With Shopify's name generator, you don't really have to worry about that. They also have a big learning center, so if you're a new merchant, you can go on there and feed your brain with endless, endless pieces of information that's going to help you grow your business. Not only can Shopify provide you with a nice looking storefront, but it also manages inventory to a T. If you want to get some ideas for your business and finally get the ball rolling and see what Shopify can do for you, head over to shopify.com slash mav and pick out what plan works for you. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for watching. Now let's get back to the prepaid programming. Howdy. Make it in there. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was an adventure. Yeah, I'm I'm inside. I didn't fall in the water at all. Dude, I'm gonna boogie back to my camp. Have fun. Bye. Thanks. How's it going? <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> a little different. It's my first time camping and I thought I might as well try it out. <laughs> you guys have any luck fishing? Nice. So this is the inside of the tent. You can see we've got some big giant inflatable arms that are all one piece and they're connected to this giant floaty life raft. The wind's picking up a little bit, and you can see it's kind of blowing me around, but luckily for me, my anchors are doing their job. On this corner with the stripey rope, the anchor that I put down earlier has like a spikes in it, so it like digs into the ground, it's good for in the wind. And then the first one that I put out with the white rope, that one has a heavy anchor, so we should be covered on all bases if the wind does decide to pick up tonight, which it very well could because it's calling for rain. Um, if it does rain, I'm a little bit concerned about the construction of this thing because there is some really heavy duty stitching going on here. And on some of the pieces you can see that they actually seam ripped this little nylon fabric out and there's holes left over. So. I'm not exactly sure how waterproof I think that this thing is. I think it's, you know, made to protect you from the wind and make you feel like you're in a safe environment. But um, again, I bought this from China directly from a manufacturer as a sample. So this is a maybe not the uh, most quality tent that you can purchase. I brought a couple lights from my campers to hang up in here. It's actually pretty cozy despite the fact that it literally feels like I'm rocking back and forth. I mean, you can see this little thin membrane right here. If I'm poking it. That's the only thing that's keeping that thing, keeping me separated from the water right now. Could tear and I could go right in, but luckily enough, I mean, this is, this is full of air, so I'm not gonna sink. At least I shouldn't, unless this gets severed or this gets severed. So we just gotta be careful with sharp objects and fire. Do not burn anything down. I am going to put my sleeping bag out. Today I decided to bring my zero degree synthetic sleeping bag. Um, this one's relatively cheap. I think I got it for like 60 bucks. It's made by Kelty. Um, this bag, is great for out here because synthetic material actually stays warmer if it gets wet. Down actually gets like completely wrecked if you get any water on it. So I figured, figured there's gonna be some, some water around me. So we're gonna be synthetic. This is actually rated for 30 degrees. It should hopefully keep me warm enough tonight. Oh, got myself my pillow. I have a love-hate relationship with these small camp pillows. I think I own like four of them. I haven't found the perfect one yet. There might not be one. 
Maybe this is it right here. That one's actually pretty comfortable. It's nice. Air mattress is pretty comfortable. Not much to do in here rather than lay other than lay because standing up is atrocious. This cabin does have windows all the way around, which I rolled up before I got out here because you don't have access outside of these to untie them. I would go ahead and say that's a that's a construction flaw. Sun's going down. It's pretty much set right now. Got my wet pants hung up. Pretty soon here, I'm gonna start cooking on some dinner. I imagine it's gonna be pretty tough to pee outside of this thing, so brought myself a Gatorade. Why would that help, you might ask? Right here, that's why. And if you don't get it, now you will. Oh, this is nice though. All right, I know what you're asking yourself. What does somebody inside of a floating tent make themselves for dinner? Well, as much as I want to be poking and proding around with my uh, knives and such, I happened to pick these up when I was in France, and they are French, French MREs, not military ones, but just backpacking ones. So we're gonna give these a go. Got a paella. I was actually gonna make that if I caught a fish. So today we're gonna have the chili con carne, which is basically just chili with meat. I'm going to try my hardest to not absolutely burn this place down. I'm a little bit worried about starting up this stove in here even because I don't know. Never have done it before. Think good thoughts, positive thoughts. That's what the inside looks like. Looks like we got some beans, some rice in there. I'm not really sure what level to fill it up to. It says 400 milliliters of water, or level number six. So that's number six. It smells good, at least. The boat keeps bumping into me, and it's kind of tripping me out. Ooh, it's very boiling. Boil our hands off. Okay. Just gonna add our hot water. Carefully. It's hot. All right. Give it a little mix and let it sit. Not the most in-depth thing to be cooking, but like I said, really just did not want to puncture a hole inside of this. Even just boiling hot water is already sketchy enough. All right, well, some bugs are starting to get in here, so I think it's about time to zip the door. The one thing that's kind of a bummer about this tent too is that there's no, there's literally no screens, no ventilation. Like we don't have, no screens. Good thing we have those holes from when they ripped the seams out because otherwise I won't be able to breathe in here. Just kidding, it's a, it's a joke. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Better just check on this stuff. Okay. That doesn't look like American chili, but that's fine. All right, chili con carne. Carne. 
chili con carne. It smells, it honestly smells pretty bland. Um, one thing I was thinking about while I'm sitting here waiting for my food is why on earth would you camp on the water when you can camp on land? Well, let me tell you. One, you don't have to worry about wildlife getting into your tent other than maybe some ducks or like a water snake or something. Um, two, you're always on your fishing spot, so you can just wake up and drop a line or fish in the middle of the night if you want to. Camp out at your spot that you don't want anybody fishing at. And three, you're never going to run out of water. It's just smarter. Other than the fact that literally the only thing that's separating me from 30 feet deep of 60 degree water is a thin membrane. But other than that, great. It's alright. Sometimes you just gotta go into food with an open mind. Um, under seasoned in my opinion. It's got a little zing. You can taste the beef. It's alright. Give it like a like a seven out of ten. I need to. See, now it's like a seven and a half. The wind's been kind of picking up outside. Um, not much I can do about it. Just hope that the anchor holds me and that my boat stays tied. Shouldn't have an issue though. I think it's time to get under the covers for the night. In my inflatable fun house, checking out for the night. It's about 50 degrees outside. Yeah, I'm nice and toasty inside. Night. Well, it's 11.38 and it's starting to rain. Wind's definitely picking up a little bit. I'm getting rocked back and forth into the boat and it's tough to fall asleep. I keep thinking about if something pops the boat or if water leaks in or something. It's not looking great. Okay, it's about 3 a.m. My boat's still there. Sounds like a worry about it in the morning problem. Uh. Well, good morning. Boat's still there. That's good. My air mattress got pretty deflated. Alright, this is not going to be easy to get into the kayak. I just feel like I'm gonna go right in. Hey! Oh, that was scary. That was real scary. Alright, I ended up leaving the uh I ended up leaving the phone inside of the tent while I was pulling the anchors just because if I fell in. I didn't want to ruin my entire phone, so we got the anchors pulled. And we got the boat on shore and the floating tent. I slept like a bag of rocks. Not a good bag of rocks. That sounds like a good thing. It was not a good thing. I woke up like five different times. Anyway, we're dry, we're good, we're back on shore. Best case scenario so far. I'm take everything out of this thing quick and get on the road.
All right, got everything packed up. Now it's time to get back on the road. That probably went as good as it could have, given the circumstances, being in a floating tent and doing it for the first time. So let me know if you have any ideas of what you wanna see out of the inflatable tent in the comments below. But as always, until next time, you already know the drill. Just keep on trucking.